all those things that just something small like a kid and a hug and a you know these things they do inside change you and I could understand that but you know with this movie it's true it's like you just I know I haven't really said anything about the movie because but I, I've said feelings and, and and things like that because it's like like I said this movie's it's it's about this man who works his whole life to get success and then he finally gets it by you know because one of these people Paul Sunday who's a twin with Eli Sunday comes to him gives him a lead to get some land and then there's nothing but oil and he sells I mean he buys buys all the land and then he sells to Union Oil a pipeline and then he finally gets you know I guess billions millions of dollars for the time and now he's got a pipeline and he's rich and and then you kind of end the movie with him jaded and kind of alone and he's just kind of said some very harsh things to his son which people interpret as was he saying harsh things to be mean or to, to, to make the kid you know put something in the kid to make him want to be a competitor and do good at what he wants to do which is oil because that's very interesting uh, to ask like can you be successful if you, you what propels a person to success is it hate for the people like 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 with with like with Apple, a lot of that came from the success of Apple came a lot from the the hatred of IBM, the idea that they were going to be Big Brother, the idea that they were going to be the monopoly, and that 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 they were going to take over the computer market and not make it with what it is now, people, personal, able for everyone to use and understand. It was kind of that why IBM shouldn't own all the computers and it was just that s kind of simplicity that kind of propelled was it that hatred to beat the enemy to vanquish the enemy to slay the dragon that propelled success it could have been that's a part of of life like maybe that there's that hatred of you know and I think a lot of people have that in success you know maybe it was that person, your father, or your mother, or your your that girlfriend, or the, somebody said something to you, or made a comment and said you're not going to be anything in life, or you're not going to, you know, or you're never going to get successful, or you're never like somebody put something in you, and that kind of is the flame that doesn't go out, that burns inside you to say, I'm going to do this one, not because I, it's what I want to do, but also because I really want to shut those people up. I really want to. You know, not to get all Christina Aguilera stronger, but it does. Is that necessary for people to? Is that the engine that keeps you towards success? The kind of to have a fuck you to people, to to say fuck you. And I know I'm gonna continue talking about this, but like I also feel like I remember reading that is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Because to me, there have been times like I've, I remember re hearing in podcasts and people who work in the industry that I want to get into film they say well you know what sometimes you can't win with people like that because inside them they like you're you're fighting you're fighting a losing battle because you're not fighting them you're fighting that girl that didn't want to go out with them or that the, the the guy that picked on them like that they they they're getting back at that person they hate that person and they, because they made them hate themselves, or they made, or they hate themselves, and they're, that that's what you're fighting. That you can't beat them. That there's still that person, and you can't ever win. And I feel like that's what Daniel Plainview, like that. He's still like you can't win with a guy like that because he's a good guy. Like he does work his ass off, and he does, you know, he does. People might see him as a monster. And I just go, you know, for me, I look at the whole movie and I thought, you know, it would have been amazing if he was a doctor. For some reason, I just feel like, like that is a profession. He would have probably made a hell of a lot of, he probably would have made a better doctor than he ever would have an oil man. I just don't know why. I just, like, when I see him, I go, for a guy like that, like, I hate people, I, don't, I see the worst in them, I, I whatever, <coughs> sorry, that... He couldn't really get into religion. He didn't. That, which is kind of what Eli's character represents—the idea that, well, when you're that evil and greedy and 
corrupted. Just find God and everything's good. And you see with Eli that no, Eli's the same way. Like at the end of the movie, it represents that like, you know, he he sells out. It's kind of like a scene, a, like selling out to the devil, making a deal with it. Like that he kind of sells out his. Every his whole life to go, you know, he says, uh, I'm a false prophet and God is a superstition. And he continues to say that just so that he could get success. It just shows that, like, everything up to his life has been bullshit. You know, it's kind of that, like, your faith has, has been in question and it's crap. Like, you're not, you don't really believe in God, you know. You're just, you're using it as, like, a platform to become, a, you know, I don't know, a speaker, boredom, whatever, but you don't really believe in it because when it finally, when you were finally tested, you just gave it up, and then you got nothing for it, which is kind of that kind of devilish deal. He lost a lot. He lost a lot. His, you know, his life, his, you know, his, who he was, everything. Like, he lost it, and he kind of, all because, and he got nothing for it. What did he get for it? He sold out who he was, and what did he get for it? And that's very interesting. And it's kind of the same thing here with Daniel Plainview. What did he get in his life, that's very like I mean, does did he lose his son forever? Did he what? Did he? But did, but then the question becomes: Did he, did he ever have a son to begin with? I mean, did he does it, does he really consider him a son? Did he you know what what very strange what goes on in the minds of, of men and, and people and this this kind of madness and that yes I can see why people compare this to Citizen Kane and Giant and movies like that that like. It just that's the very strange the madness of people at the top and they say it's lonely at the top but it's also it's crazy at the top it's there's a lot of psychological insanity at the top with these people because it's just what makes these people these people and what put these people these people are they born into it or like what makes these people that way this craziness and that's that's what the whole movie to me it was just madness. It was very strange. I can't. I could. I, it's 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 a movie that I I I've said all I had to say about it, and I still I could probably say more that I don't. It's so complex and so smart and so good that that it, it is a masterpiece, and it is a movie that you have to like Citizen Kane, like a rosebud. You know what does it really mean? The the. It makes you re-examine and reevaluate. It makes, like I said, it, all this from a movie about a guy who just struck, struck oil. Now it's there's some funny moments. Daniel Day Lewis is obviously a powerhouse here. Eli, the guy who plays Eli Paul, is is just as great. I mean, it's it's there's still that, but at its core, I look at the movie and I just I 